word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want a rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at two bucks for five boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. As you can see, I have my handy dandy little uh, custom DIY LED display here. I made a video on this fairly recently and I decided to scale things up a bit. Uh, take what I learned from making this little guy and expand it. So we have some new boards in basically. So without further ado, yeah, just wanted to uh, thank JLC PCB for supporting my crazy endeavors. Uh, no sane person would, would think of, well, I wouldn't say no one would think of doing this, but no sane person would want to willingly hand solder something like this. And we can see here, have uh, two sets of PCBs, so, uh, and I forgot to say, uh, thanks for the magnifying glass. Will definitely come in handy with soldering a million tiny little LEDs. Oh my goodness, what did I get myself into? Okay, so, as with the uh, single digit, it worked out really well, so I just pretty much expanded it um, to make eight digits. Uh, so here you can see just just what I'm talking about. Look at that. So eight digits. Um, I added some um, decimal points as well, just to be thorough. Um, flip this over. I did the uh, matte black um, solder mask. It looks really nice uh, contrasting against LEDs being lit. Uh, so um, I'm calling this tiny LED display. <laughs> Uh, why not? Anyway, um, I have, you can see, all the rows and the columns are, are attached together in many, many vias. Um, and everything is brought out. So this is essentially acting as a 7 by 32, I believe it was, um, matrix. I don't have positions for all the LEDs. So for instance, if you're addressing this one, uh, it's missing the upper order LEDs. But um, I was able to basically break everything out into a ton of pins and perfect. I'd asked, I'd put a note saying, please, please put the, uh, the internal, uh, manufacturing designator on the back of the board, not the front. And they listened so that I'm really happy with that. I was afraid they were going to stick it on the bottom here or something that would ruin the aesthetics of this. So that I'm really super happy with that. Thank you so much, JLC PCB. I've had trouble with other manufacturers before. They'll just put it like anywhere, like sm smack dab in the middle of a design when that's meant to look really nice on the front. So anyway, so yeah, we have all the pins broken out, um, all the you know anodes and the common cathodes. So there's that. And I put, I did the same trick that I used for my uh, word clock. I put uh, holes that you can solder a little wire to because um, this has a matching controller board here. And um, this is actually going to be a, um, an 18 mega 32U4 um, set up right in here, uh, ISP uh, header, and then a uh, micro USB port. So once you burn the bootloader, you can actually control it or do anything you want over a USB. Uh, onboard real-time clock and crystal as always um, I needed to use a uh, four 8-bit so 32-bit shift register to obviously control um, all the anodes and uh, cathodes are just directly controlled by the micro and what else we got we got buttons to set the time and some pins brought out and whatnot anyway the important thing is uh, this is basically just gonna stack like so so I'm going to end up using, um, you can see here, um, just little pieces of wires uh, soldered kind of at right angle to all these pads. I was going to use through holes, but I didn't want to have holes poking out the front. So I wanted to keep the front perfectly smooth and flat. So I'm going to have to poke wires, or, you know, cut off leads through and then solder them to all these points along the top and the bottom. And so it'll be a two PCB stack design. Fortunately, that means once I solder these together, I don't have access to all these guys. Uh, so what I might actually end up doing is uh, putting a female uh, 
machine pin socket on this side and so that you can plug it in and these will have male pins so I could always remove it if I wanted to to access something to fix something on this side anyway um, this is gonna be interesting in this video I'm going to solder this <laughs> I'm going to regret this already. I'm going to show you guys me soldering one of these digits. And I'm going to go and take my time and solder the rest by hand off camera. Um, so that I can keep my sanity, sort of. I'm going to solder this guy up real quick and uh, write up some basic test firmware. I'm not going to write up the full clock application for this guy yet. I'm just going to have this um, just, you know, count or something like that. Anyway, this is going to take me quite a long while, so... For you guys, it'll be a second. For me, it'll mo most likely be like a week or two. Um, so I let's get into it. I guess that's all I have to say. Okay, so here we are. I'm going to show you the process of soldering just one of these tiny little LEDs. Um, and then I'll speed through the rest of the uh, digit. But basically, you just want to get flux on all the pads. Here we go. It's going to be a little bit messy, but we'll uh, clean this all off after we're done. Better to have too much flux in this case than too little. So there, they're pretty good coverage. So. I have to figure out which way these go, and the LEDs are so tiny. Uh, basically, the negative is where the vias are, and the positive is uh, where they're not, <laughs> if that helps at all. What I usually do is grab a coin cell and uh, just grab an LED. There is like a very small uh, green stripe, but it's really hard to see. So now I know the side closest to the uh, tweezer, closest to me, is the negative. So it should go just like that. So now, just grab a wee bit of solder. Clean off the tip, first off. Just a tiny little bit of solder. Blow some on there. Alternatively, you guys can't see it, but there's a tiny arrow pointing the direction that the current conducts on the LED on the bottom. So, got one on, tacked on the one side, add a little solder. And just get it to reflow the other side. Touch up as necessary. So here you can see one down of a ton. I believe this is like, what is it? 150 LEDs, something like that. Actually a little more than that, probably like 160. But anyway, uh, I'm going to go through this. This is going to be painful. I'll see you guys on the other side. Okay, I um, soldered one of these. Now I need to go through and do that seven more times. Oh my goodness. I'll be back in a second. This I'm not going to film because I, I'm for my sanity, I need to do this off camera. So forgive me. Okay, so I'd spent last night coding a little bit and I've gotten something together. So right now it's just uh, plugged into the, the front display part. Just plug in uh, power and have a USB uh, power bank and there we go so one thing to note is it's hard to see uh, <laughs> I actually am doing a couple things here 
much easier to see if I put it behind something that diffuses it. In real life, it's actually not that bad, but for some reason, the uh, camera really doesn't like it. You can see I'm actually modulating the brightness, and you may see some flickering that's not really apparent, you know, when I look at it with my eyes. That's due to the uh, refresh rate of the display is different than the camera, so it sometimes catches it, like, mid-frame. Uh, so anyway, uh, other than that, you can see I'm modulating brightness. There's uh, four levels of brightness currently, and... Um, I have the decimal points just scrolling across. I have it counting up. So you can see basically the last digits counting so fast um, that you can't see it moving. The um, second digit is moving very fast. Um, and so there's actually something interesting that's happening. Found a, another bug that I didn't catch. Um, some of the digits are getting corrupted, it looks like. I basically, the way that this is working is very similar to the word clock that I made. Uh, it's basically um, a frame buffer that I'm writing into, and then a um, an interrupt, a timer-based interrupt that uh, grabs that data and then writes it to the display. That's interesting. Anyway, um, you can see it more or less works. Got to work on some of these uh, bugs and whatnot. But yeah, it's um, writing to all the digits. Ah, oh, that's interesting. Actually, a lot easier to view when you're not head-on, but it is very bright. Um, even at its lowest brightness setting, it's still decently viewable, I would say. But yeah, you can see there. One weird bug that I got to work out is um, this is timer interrupt driven, so the display refresh should be independent of any other code that's running. But you can see interestingly enough, um, that, hmm, it's doing it again, that's weird, uh, you can see though that, um, depending on brightness, it speeds up and slows down, so that's, um, it's kind of peculiar, <laughs> it's something I'm gonna need to hammer out, and it looks like, uh, some of the digits have, uh, corrupted again, that's really weird, let me see if I, power cycle it yeah actually if I think about it um, the entire display so is um, driven via uh, some shift registers on the back of the controller board and um, I'm bit banging it so one one silly mistake that I made is I I randomly assigned the pins for the shift register I didn't double check to make sure that they were hardware SPI and um, kind of forgot about that oopsie and uh, so it forced me now to bit bang the SPI. So I'm limited in terms of how fast I can do that. And it uses resources. So it's not a good way to do it. It works, but uh, it's definitely not as fast as it could be. So that limits the, um, the multiplex rate. Because I actually have to do that call uh, within the interrupt. Which sending 32 bits repeatedly in an interrupt is not so great. But yeah, um, other than that, there are a couple of dead LEDs that I either missoldered. There's like one that's kind of dim here. If I touch it, it gets brighter. Um, the one in this corner and the one in this corner never light. So I'm guessing I either accidentally killed them by heating them up too much or it's a cold solder joint. So I'm just going to retouch that up real quick. But yeah, definitely something funky is going on with the software. So... So it might be um, corrupting the frame buffer, like I said, so I'm definitely going to have to fix that. But yeah, let's see. Let's see, it's <laughs> looking kind of funky there. Um, starts off pretty good. Then it gets a little weird. But yeah, anyway, you can see four different levels of brightness. It's kind of going through there really fast. So it goes lowest to highest. I need to solder the real-time clock and write the software up for that, but I need to fix these display bugs. This is just sort of a rough proof of concept, the uh, display driver software, so I'm going to have to hammer out all the bugs and whatnot. It seems to be the faster moving digits do that. So I might leave this running for a while and then check to see if any of these do that. Or it could also be something up with the um, the shift one of the shift registers, um, could be, you know, being driven out of spec or 
could be cold solder joint on it or something um because if it's always these digits that do that so basically the way that i am doing this is every two digits gets one shift register so one two three four i haven't observed any weirdness going on in these two it's this one and both digits that are doing it so it might be that shift register i need to and it just fixed it <laughs> that is really really weird I have no idea. I'm going to have to do some stress testing. It's working just fine now. That's, that's really freaky. So I found a pattern that's rather interesting. When um, these digits, I don't know if it's this, well, I, I guess it's this one, the fifth one. Um, when it, there we go, when it gets to a relatively high value, it corrupts. And then when it rolls over to like zero, it's fine. So there's something really freaky going on in the, um, the circuit. You can see it's at nine right now. I'm gonna wait till it rolls over and it'll just fix itself. I suppose not like Constantly changing the brightness would help. See, it rolled over and th these two di digits are displaying correctly now. So it could be something like current related. Well, maybe not because between eight and zero, not that many segments are different. It's something probably with the communication, the um, shift registers, I'm pretty sure now. Okay, I've actually been debugging the software a little bit. And I actually found kind of what might be the issue. So it always corrupts, for some reason, this digit um, when this digit reaches four. And I believe it's um, having something to do with the speed of my SPI or the signal integri integrity or something like that. So when I'm writing to it slowly like this, I can write fours and there's, there's absolutely no corruption. I, I left this running for like half an hour and I'm just cycling through um, all the different symbols that I have pre-programmed and I'm uh, just bouncing the uh, decimal point over and you can see it's working just fine now. So I'm guessing it's um, possibly down to um, writing the character four takes slightly longer for some reason than some of the other characters when sequentially written and it happens to um, overflow the the time period for the multiplex so it takes a little longer than it's supposed to so it starts corrupting the data so i'm just gonna limit how fast i write to the display and that should be fine <laughs> so yeah now it's uh working and yeah i'm happy with this so far okay last edit i swear so <laughs> at least in this video so i um more or less fix the problem just by slowing things down essentially and um i actually added not a full alphabet but i um had as many letters as i could uh so i i can't display certain characters like t um i can't display like w m n any of those like characters because this is after all constrained to like a seven segment sort of thing but you can see here I just have this stepping through all the, um, the available characters. And there you go just pretty much repeats but yeah looks very nice actually i love the way this looks in the dark gonna have to obviously this is on the highest brightness but um turn down the brightness a bit uh for normal use i'll probably just tack on a um a light like an ambient light sensor wish i'd kind of planned ahead and there's plenty of room on the pcb to add that but i didn't <laughs> so i'm gonna have to like find a way of mounting it uh, but luckily I brought out all the extra pads, so I have plenty of I.O. left. I have like a handful, like six or seven I.O. left. So yeah, good to go on that end at least. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys are interested, I could do more 
uh, stuff with this display. Just going to turn this into a clock and maybe modify this to, to display my YouTube sub count. <laughs> but yeah, anyway, um, stick this on my desk at work. That'll be pretty nifty. Anyway, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.